Hey guys, my name is Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, we're talking about where to place your medical kits in a professional setting, a home and car kit, as well as everyday carry. So like I just said, today we are going through where to keep your medical supplies, whether that's in a professional setting on a plate carrier or battle belt, in a standalone kit that's stored in your home, at your desk, at work, or in a car, and then finally, everyday carry considerations where you physically keep those supplies on your persons. So let's start off with your everyday carry considerations. So we basically have two options here. We have on body or off body. And then when we're talking about on body carry, carry, we're gonna discuss kind of where you're going to keep them. So I am a fan of on body carry, but that is not feasible for a lot of people. As far as on body carry goes, now this video isn't going through any specific products. There's a ton of pocket kits, there's a ton of ankle kits out there, but these are the two main I'm going to focus on. So we have the option for ankle carry, and this is what I have opted for in the past simply because it's really concealable and it doesn't really affect my mobility at all. I can still sit down in the car, I can you know go on a walk, do basically anything I wanna do, and I'm going to kind of forget that ankle kit is on me. Where this becomes a kind of a, a bad idea is a place where you are worried about potential blast injuries or anything that would involve the loss of a limb. So maybe if you're motor riding a motorcycle, this might not be a good consideration for you because we actually see a lot of lower extremity amputations and injuries in that. Now, the downside to that is obvious. If you have a kit on your lower extremity and you lose that lower, lower extremity, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good which is why these kits are also really bad for professional uh, services, people working in war zones where IEDs and other blast injuries might occur. So your next option is going to be some kind of uh, on your persons. Now this is the pocket trauma kit from uh, Live the Creed. I like this one, but this one goes right in a pocket. It's really easy to carry on you. Just remember with anything on the body, that's going to decrease mobility a little bit. So in this case, if I'm gonna be sitting in a car, I don't want this in my back pocket for a long period of time. You know, if you're wearing tighter pants or have uh, less room in your pockets, this is going to take up a lot of space and become relatively bulky. Now, your third option in the everyday carry one, and I don't actually have the kit here, is going to be an in the waistband carry. Now, if you're carrying a firearm along with that, you're going to like go up probably three waist sizes. It's gonna start looking kind of weird if you have firearm, extra mag, and then an in the waistband medical kit. But that is another option for you. Once again, though, that is going to decrease your mobility. I particularly don't like in the waistband carry for any time I'm gonna be in a, a vehicle or in a sitting position for a prolonged period of time. So those are kind of your three options. Now, I like on body carry because everything is right there. And some of the disadvantages of off body carry when we're talking about a backpack it's going to be us leaving that backpack somewhere and not having immediate access to it, putting it in a locker uh, at a gym and being out of range. But a backpack or some kind of purse carry is another option for you. And honestly, what's cool about kits like this is that these are so small that you could actually put them in your pocket, on your person's, wear it on your ankle, but when you're ready to take it off body, you can take one of these kits throw it in your pack and it's gonna work the exact same. So just something to consider there. So these, these are your options for on body carry. Now, when we talk about where to keep a kit, if we're making kind of a standalone kit that's going to be placed somewhere, whether that's at work, at home, or in a vehicle, we want to really consider how long it takes us to get there, how much time we're spending around the kit. With all of this, I want you to keep in mind it takes about four minutes to bleed out entirely from a femoral bleed. So if you have stopped the bleed supplies in your car and it feels relatively close, time yourself. Go out to your car, walk out to it, run out to it, and run back and see if you can be back well within that four minute time frame. If you can't, you might wanna consider keeping it a little bit closer to you. Now, as far as putting it in a drawer at work, I would just consider where are you spending the most amount of time throughout your day? Are you going to be at your desk by that drawer? Are you putting it by a locker? Are you putting it somewhere far away? In a violent situation where you might not have access to parts of the building, consider how you're going to treat patients in that moment. Same with your home kit. Where is it most likely to be used? Where are you least likely to be barred access to that kit while you are in your home? And just make sure it's within that four minute time frame. 
Four minutes is kind of where I draw the line on an acceptable distance or a situation where I might want to have something closer to me. And that really comes into play with car kit. So that's the main consideration for these guys here. Now, last but not least on this video, and I know this is going by pretty quick, let's talk about professional considerations for carry. And I see a lot of people get this wrong. If you are someone on a team who is not directly assigned to do medical care, so you are not the team medic, you are not the designated medical provider on this team, and you are carrying a uh, plate carrier and or battle belt, you wanna make sure that you have an individual first aid kit that is easily accessible by both hands. So we call this the diver's triangle. We take a upside down triangle, we take it across the shoulders, it goes from either shoulder, and then it points down basically to the groin. And your supply should be somewhere in that zone. The reason for that is, is number one, it's in front of you. So the medic is going to treat you while you are on your back if you're incapacitated. So they need access to your supplies. Number two, we wanna do that because that is easily accessible by you with both hands. We can't reach across with our right hand to our left side very easily, especially if we're injured and vice versa. So if it's somewhere in this area, I can very easily get that ambidextrously. So in this case, I have this setup right here in front, easily accessed by both hands. I have my tourniquet right here. I think dangler pouches are really great because they do allow for that versatility. And more often than not, we don't have anything over the front of our belt. One other consideration here is how the kit is accessed. If you are the team medic and you're going to be treating someone and moving on, make sure whatever kit you're using has a workspace available to it and it's not an insert that comes out. If you have an insert that's coming out, you're not gonna be able to move patient to patient quite as efficiently as having designated pockets in front of you where you can work directly out of and then move on without packing everything up in one fell swoop. So another consideration here and something I see a lot of people doing, especially on their battle belts, is they're keeping kits in the back of their gear. Now, I get it, sometimes that's just what we have to do. A lot of times on battle belt, that's the only real estate we have available to us. But keep in mind that you're going to be treated from your back, like we just talked about. And reaching behind you is a complex motion that can be very difficult to perform while you're hurt. So in this case, we have a kit back here. This would be like ancillary gear or anything like that, but I wouldn't want my primary kit back here because I don't have a good workspace and it's going to be harder for me to pull out even though it can be done from either side. So keep that in mind as you're staging your gear. Definitely don't have kits that you physically can't reach in the thought that somebody else would do it. Keep in mind that self-aid is huge and you have to be able to self-rescue if you are not completely incapacitated. One final consideration for those operating in a war zone where explosive threats are a possibility. Do not keep any of your medical supplies on an extremity simply because it might be blown off and you will lose access to those life-saving supplies which you will then need because you are missing a limb. I do not recommend ankle kits for anybody facing an explosive threat, and I would not recommend people keep their primary tourniquets in the battle pockets on uh, your combat shirts, anything like that, just because you can lose them very easily. Now, if you wanna have backup supplies in those locations, I don't see a problem with that. Just be aware you might lose it, and you will not be able to access it when you are very badly injured in that explosion. In summary, guys, try to have your medical supplies as close to you as possible, but keep in mind that everyday carry can be inconvenient and it is not for everybody. So if you are a regular person going about your business, but you are not primarily in charge of any kind of medical operation, keeping some kind of IFAC on your persons is ideal, but you can carry that around in an off-body carry. And last but not least, you could stage kits in places where you work or live. Now, if you are a professional, keep in mind, keep all of your supplies easily accessible by both hands, and this is most easily defined by the diver's triangle, so you can get to your supplies if you have lost uh, the use of one limb. If you have any questions about this video, leave them in the comments down below. I know this was a little bit short, but I am in a new studio and really trying to get things going, so I needed something relatively easy to do. But I will see you next week.